Welcome to the live. Um, so tonight we're going to do just a little simple burn. I pulled this um, image of this cardinal. It's very wintry. And uh, we're going to do just like a little mini burn. I think we can get this done start to finish. It's going to be a pretty simple burn. And then we'll add some color at the end. Um, I've been getting some comments about my my color process and how I do the watercolors and and uh, how I mix it and stuff like that. So I will be showing you guys that process tonight. And at the end, um, I'm going to give away one of these customizer tools. Uh, this is, is mine. This is the one I've been using. And it's extremely handy. Um, if you want to add some more details or remove some of your burn area, it's particularly handy um, when you're wanting to add like whiskers or something like that. Or maybe you've got some yellowing you want to remove, something along those lines. Um, it comes with all of these bits. You get the charge cord. Uh, you get the little key that helps you change it out if you need to. And there's your little user manual. It's actually very simple. I mean, there's really not much to it. You just charge it. And there's uh, three settings, 32, one. Um, and you can really just remove these by hand and add them in by hand. And uh, it's pretty easy. So I'll be giving one of these away at the end. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to use it. I'm also going to have a tutorial coming out. Not a tutorial. A review video on this product soon. So be on the lookout for that. <clears throat> so as before I get started, I just want to say I am a little under the weather. So I, I don't know if you can tell by the sound of my voice. I've got like a little bug or something. It's not COVID. Um, took a COVID test. Some kind of little head cold or something. But I'm a little sneezy. Um, I did take something before the session tonight. So I hopefully won't be sneezing tonight. Uh, but if I do, just, just bear with me. I have water and, and tissue and cough drops and things here. So hopefully I'll, I can make it through without grossing everybody out. Um, <clears throat> so I've got my razor tip ball tip here and I've got a, a lot of new razor tip products. If you guys saw my unboxing video, this is the, one of the uh, nifty little things they sent me and uh, I really, really love it. So you slide it on to your wand before you, you turn it on and plug it up and it's like a little, a little hand rest. It's silicone. So grips pretty good and it acts as like a little rest here so when you oh you're very welcome mellow yellow you're very welcome um so you, it I absolutely love this so razor tip is one of the pins because it's so thin the wand back here gets a little hot um these ceramic additions these little ceramic tips they've added have helped keep it from getting so hot back here but you can get these little add-ons if you've got some of the original ones that don't have this little white bit. Uh, you can add this little silicone thing on the end here and it will keep your, your hand from getting too hot. It's extremely nifty. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. Um, I hope I feel better soon too. Um, my husband and I traveled this weekend and I probably picked up something somewhere. Um... It's not serious. I th I'm just a little sneezy, you know, a little congested, but it'll, it hopefully will pass in a couple of days. Um, this is the original, one of the original tips without that little ceramic bit. So it gets really hot back here. This little deal, super nifty for helping that. You can check, you can find these on the uh, razor tip site if you want to check those out. So I'm going to plug this up. And I like that it's all the way in the back too because it doesn't interfere with, you know, your grip down here. So it still feels very pin-like, but it does give you some separation from that heat. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just clean my tip a little bit. Um, I like to show this process in my lives because people ask me about it and this just, just gives you a little glimpse into it. Um, this is just a piece of aluminum oxide. I just kind of rub it into my bit of leather here. And you can get these cleaning kits on Amazon. And then I just kind of rub the tip into that 
leather strip there and it just kind of polishes it a little bit. I'm not looking for it to be super shiny. I just kind of want to get it all that carbon build up off. And that's, that's it. That's all there is to it. It's pretty quick and easy. Okay, so I have, this is my little template and I have already got an outline traced here. These are my little poplar canvases. Um, I buy these planks at Home Depot and cut them myself to their, to little square sizes. They're <clears throat> super nifty for burning little minis like this. Um, I was wondering if you prefer the razor tip or the cold wood. Um, how often do I clean the tips? Um, so I've, I've gotten where, to where I really like my razor tip over my cold wood. I, I haven't used my cold wood in a really long time. I've gotten so used to using this little unit here. This is my razor tip P80. It's so nice and compact. Um, it only has one one pin on it, but that's really all I need. I mean, the razor tip wands are so easy to change. Just, you know, bam, take it off, put it on like that. You don't really need to. Um, I find that I don't, I don't need two connections for pins. So just the one is plenty. <clears throat> and uh, I'm really, really loving it. And um, razor tip uh, sent me some other burners to try out, to test and review. And they have a couple of new machines um, that are more powerful. So I'm going to be testing those soon and letting you guys um, see up close all the different features and comparing those so you can get an idea of, of which one suits you best. Um, really digging the razor tip products now. I really enjoy their customer service as well too. I've gotten to know them uh, pretty well over there and they're just they're just wonderful people. I mean, I, they really care about their customers and the products that they make and making products that work for wood burners. So um, it's just a great company to be a part of. So, okay. So let's get started here. I'm gonna, um, if you're not familiar with the P80, it does, uh, it goes from 50 to, 800 on the, and I think it's degrees. Um, their customer service is amazing. Yes, it is. I agree. Um, so I usually start in the 500s and then I adjust as needed. Um, when I'm doing this line art, I'm not really looking for a certain shade or tonal value. So I'm really just looking to um, move through the wood pretty easily but still achieve a, like a, a darker line. So I don't want to be too hot, but I don't want to be too cold either. It's going to take a long time. So I'm going to start at 575 and then just kind of see how it goes. Let me kind of zoom in here so you can see. So I'm going to start with one of these branches. Yeah, and so that's not quite hot enough. I'm gonna go up to 650. You just punch the numbers in there on the screen. Okay, that's a little better. This might be a little bumpy because I'm using my rounded tip. And as I'm going across these grains, it might get a little Bumpish. But I'm not I'm not too concerned about that when I'm doing my line art. I really worry about bumps um, when I am burning outlines for letters. I like my letters to be nice and crisp. But this is a a branch here that I'm burning, so if it's got some bumps on it, that's just gonna help it look a little bit more natural. I'm just gonna, just tracing along. This darker grain here is a little bit harder. So you can see it's taking a little bit longer. There we go. And uh, 
just tracing along my marks here and then I'll add some details. <clears throat> I like to outline first and then add details. And if you're new here, if you're new to burning, um, I'm not putting much pressure on this at all. There's not really any need to, to push down into the wood. That's going to make it harder to control. And you're going to end up with even more bumps and mistakes. You really just want to kind of go slow and, and guide your pen along the wood there. And then just let the heat do the work. If you want a darker mark, you just go a little bit slower. If you want a lighter mark, you go a little bit quicker, or you can adjust your heat. There we go, we got that little bit done. should have outlined before I think <laughs> I think I've been doing that in these lives so you guys don't have to watch me do this boring part or last time I think I freehanded just to kind of show that process a little bit the outlining is a little boring but once you get once you get the outlining done it goes pretty quick and I'm going with the grain here, so it goes a little bit smoother. So when you go against the grain, you get the, the bumps and all that. go up a little bit. What am I? 650. I'm going to go to 7. Just see what that does. There we go. Go a little bit faster now. lighter part of the wood is a little bit softer poplars are pretty consistent wood but every now and then you'll find a, a bit that has this like darker center here it's like the I mean I don't know I just assume it's like the center <clears throat> of the wood and sometimes the the planks are a little bit darker in the center a little bit harder Get his tail down here. And I did trace this with my carbon. I just taped the template to the wood and place a little sheet of carbon under there. Get a little, a little feet here, a little outline of his feet. Okay. I just kind of roughly drew the outline of him and we'll, I'll add some details in the center. I really want to, um, I think for the next live, I'm going to cut up some live edge pieces, some little live edge minis. I'm really getting to where I like the live edge bits of wood. I was really a, a poplar fan for a really long time and I still like it because I can cut it whatever size I want but 
I'm starting to like that that bit of live edge a little bit more than I used to. I got some really nice um, planks of maple with a live edge from uh, KJP Select Hardwoods. If you're not familiar with with them, give them a, a Google. They've got a really nice selection of wood. <clears throat> if you want to do um, cutting boards and charcuterie boards, they have a nice selection for that too. And then they've got some basswood and poplar. And outline is a little a little face here. And I don't think I'm going to add any background bits. I think I'm going to leave him alone and just let the bird be the, the star of the show on this one. Okay, let me do a comment check real quick. I haven't been looking. How often do I need to clean my tips? Um, I usually give them a clean every, every time before I get started. And if I take a break... Uh, whilst I'm burning, I'll give them a little, a little polish in between breaks while I'm burning. It only takes a couple of seconds, um, <clears throat> to, to give them a little polish in that leather. So, uh, I don't, I don't do it when it's hot, but in between when it's kind of cooled off, I'll give it a little, a little polish in there. Hey, Connie, that's okay. You didn't miss much. All I did was outline here i've got a little piece of poplar here doing a little winter cardinal and uh just finished outlining so let's let's start filling in this branch so i'm just going to do some lines up and down i'm not um following any anything in particular you can see um in the template here it's kind of just all jumbled in there but i'm not going to really pay attention i'm just kind of make it up um what i want are my lines to kind of all go in the same direction and i'm gonna add more on this on the right side just to kind of make it look like it's more um just kind of darker on that edge and then i'll kind of thin out my lines on the left side so it looks more highlighted and again, this is a, a tree branch, so I'm not real worried about the bumps or making the lines perfect. I'm just adding these little denser marks in here. And just kind of creating that illusion that it's a little shaded on this side. Can you see? I can, sometimes I forget to check my view. Like, am I, is my pen and my canvas in view? I'm going to add a little bit of color to these branches. I want it to kind of be wintry. Have that winter look. Okay, so now I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I'll just add, like sporadically, add a few lines to this outer edge. I don't want to add too much. Just kind of want to give it a little something there. There we go. One branch is done. Let's go to this one. So I'm gonna do the same kind of thing on the underside of the branch. I'm gonna give give it a darker, thicker, more dense patterns of, of lines. 
And then on the top, I will just spread it out a little bit. I'm going to change this one up, kind of right along that bottom edge a little bit more. Just so it looks a little bit different from the other one. Does anybody have any wonderful plans for the holidays? Anything big going on? I know um, Clay and I are just going to stay here. Our daughter is going to college next year, so we're trying to make the most of our, our moments together here in the house. I mean, she, you know, she'll come home for college, I hope for the holidays and things, but still, while, she, while she's still here, we're trying to make the most of it. While, while she's still living in the house. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, little under the weather. If you didn't hear me in the beginning, I'm a little um, I'm a little bit sick, so if I cough or sneeze, I apologize. Um, I've only tried this when I was little, but my husband bought a set. We're both learning. Oh, very cool. Cherry, um, a lot, uh, that's, you know, a common, um, thing that people say, like, you know, hey, I tried this once when I was a kid, and, and now I'm kind of getting more into, into doing the arts and crafts with it. It's so much fun, and with the wood options out there, you can really do just so many things, so many possibilities. Um, and then somebody says, where did I get the template? This pic this is a picture from Pexels.com. You can find imagery there that you can use as artists' reference photos. And um, I bring this into Photoshop. I, I like to use Photoshop to kind of doctor up my photos and create templates and things. And um, I just create a black and white, like, line version in Photoshop. And then I um, just bring it out and trace it onto the wood. Okay. So, let me, I'm going to switch to the tail here. We've got the branches done. And you can see, we again, we've just got some lines here kind of going in one direction. It's a little bit thicker. So I'm just gonna start filling this in with lines. Now sometimes I like to get a little, um, a little bit more artistic with it, maybe add different textures and patterns of lines, but because this is his tail and this is, you know, feathers going in certain directions, I'm just gonna keep the lines nice and straight. And I'm just going to add some thicker versions here. Kind of more a more dense pattern of lines. Want a little bit of that raw wood coming through. So that when I add some color, you can kind of see it in there. So I don't want to completely fill it in with a solid burn. But I want it to be a little bit on the thicker side. And you can see it seems seems like filling it in and adding the details um, is quicker than outlining for some reason. Okay. I'm glad I put the tail down here on this darker grain here because it's a little bit tougher. And uh, it's giving me a little bit of 
trouble here. Gonna go a little bit slower than on that lighter grain. And I'm gonna leave that space nice and open there so you can kind of see that color. Okay, and it comes up here. And we keep going in this nice line pattern. But I'm gonna try to keep these a little bit more um, neat, I guess you'd say. Just because I really want them to be differentiated from his body. So his body feathers are going to be a little bit more sporadic. And I want his wing feathers here to stand out more. So if I create a different texture and a different pattern, you'll be able to tell the difference. Instead of just doing them all the same. Give it a little extra time on this harder bit here. Okay, I'm gonna fill in this little area with some little curved lines there. His feet don't really do much. They're just kind of there. It's like, it's like the, ab the absence of burn adds to his feet coming across the thing, across the branch. <clears throat> we got more lines here. These are, these are kind of boring, I will, I will admit. These, these wing feathers aren't quite as exciting, are they? Well, we're going to get into the fun stuff here in a second. Okay. All right, we're done, done with that bit. I'm going to add an extra little line here just so you can kind of see where his wing separates from his the back line there. There we go. And we got a little bit of separation there. Okay. So you look at the rest. Um, these are all just kind of squiggly lines. So really all I'm going to do is pay attention to the direction. These go this way. These kind of curve. These come straight down. And his, his head feather just kind of go everywhere. So I'm not really looking for any kind of particular shade or tonal value here. I'm really just looking to add lines and let me try to zoom. There we go. And just try to zoom. I mean, sorry you guys. I'm, I'm under the weather and this is making my brain not quite work right. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just adding some squiggly lines here. I'm trying to make sure that I'm leaving enough raw wood for the color. And it's kind of bright around his face. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave some negative space there. So even though I do these, you know, Photoshop templates... Um, I don't follow them 100%. I'm really just looking for density. Like, how are the lines? Where are they denser? You know, where are they lighter? And then I, I kind of I add my own line shape instead of following the photo perfectly. Okay. Now that we're done with this head, so I'm going to just kind of give myself some lines to follow like these come straight down here in the center and they start to kind of curve here they curve over here and they kind of go back this way over here and that just kind of gives me um a pattern to follow so as i'm burning i don't get lost because i you know sometimes i do that i get lost in what i'm doing i don't pay attention to the direction but if i give myself some like 
guidelines and helps. Let's do a comment check. Um, I live in the forest with tons of wood. It should be great for free supplies. Oh, that's awesome. Do you guys have a, like a kiln or how do you dry them out? Um, I always wonder how, you know, people cut their own wood. And they have to dry for so long and all that. Um, our daughter's in our second year at university right here in your hometown. Quiet for Christmas. Too expensive to go too far. I hear you. I hear you. We're, we are saving those college dollars and uh, keeping ourselves on a budget, too. What do I use um, for color? Um, I use watercolors and I'm going to show you how to do that so it's not going to take long at all to fill this in and I'm going to show you how I do my colors and how I mix them and stuff like that Timothy hey I'm glad you're here too what temperature am I on uh, Don right now I am at 700 on my p80 which is a bit high but this poplar's um a little bit tough the grains are a little bit darker so, um, it's not burning quite as buttery smooth as some of the other poplar planks I've used. So, I'm going to a little bit of a higher heat here just so I can go a little faster. Okay, so I'm going to start adding my lines. I'm going to add a couple to the outer edge. Sometimes the, the border just looks a little stark, a little a little too crisp and so I like to add some little faint outer lines there just to kind of soften it a little bit so all I'm doing here is just kind of adding some squiggles little squiggly lines and just making sure they're all going in the same direction The bird is kind of um, all one shade. There's not really one area that's too much darker than the rest of it. Like maybe right here. It's a little bit more shaded. So I'll add a denser collection of lines there. But for the most part, it's pretty, it's pretty much the same all the way across. I'm <clears throat> just looking to make sure my lines go in a nice, consistent pattern here. Kind of mix it up, swirl them a little bit. Sometimes I kind of loop them around like that. Just so the patterns don't get too boring. You can see it just, it doesn't take much time at all to do these pieces and to to fill these in with this line art style it's really quite nice I have really really enjoyed burning again since I found or you know I didn't you know find it I started doing it rather just kind of experimented with so many different ways of burning and lots of different techniques and art styles and things and have just really really enjoyed this this line art version of creating images instead of doing the the heavy shading Okay, so right here-ish, it gets a little bit darker. 
in tone. But instead of creating a tone, I'm just gonna burn a denser collection of lines. And it'll just kind of give you the impression that it's a darker tone. can't wait to break into all of these razor tip things and share with you guys all the differences. I have been curious myself for a really long time. Um, the P80 that I'm using now is the only razor tip burner I've ever had. And so I'm very curious about all of the differences between each one and, um, which one works best for certain situations and things like that. Starting to get a little bit more squiggly down here. It's just fun to do the squiggles. I can't help myself add some squiggles in here. Okay, now I'm going to start I'm gonna thinning these out a little bit. So they're not quite so dense, densely packed anymore. Just kind of start to spread them out. We are almost done with this guy. We finished burning the body area. Can add this <clears throat> little bit of darkness to his face here. And I'm gonna show you how I use this, um, this customizer, the, um, Oh Lord, I can't think of words. Um, my little customizer tool here to add in some more details. It's really a super handy little thing. I'm almost kind of mad that I haven't had it sooner. <laughs> um, I mean, I have a Dremel, but my Dremel is so big, it doesn't really work for this. I can't, can't hold it at an angle like I can hold this thing. And this one's so much thinner and nicer and so much easier to control. I just really enjoy it. Okay, so now I'm going to add this little bit of darkness to his face here. So, And I'm going to go ahead... Even though he's got some lightness around his eye like that. I'm going to burn. I'm just going to burn it. And then I'm going to show you with the customizer how you can get that detail back. Get that raw wood back. I found that it is particularly useful when you're doing, um, if you're burning, 
you know, a dog or an animal that has really light fur, like maybe a white dog or something like that, or maybe a cat that's got some nice pronounced whiskers. It can be really hard to burn around those details. So having the customizer really helps add those little details back in. And you can use a razor blade or an X-Acto knife, something like that, but having the customizer really makes all the difference because it's so much quicker. Okay, let me zoom back out. So we have finished burning the bird. Not too bad. Turn my burner off here. So you can see we've got some detail in there. His tail looks a little bit darker. The branches look like they've got a little bit of shade there. And uh, he's got some definition here where it looks like he's a little bit shaded. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. So I'm gonna add some detail back in with the customizer. So um, there are so, so many tips in here, you guys. Um, a lot of these are repeated, like I can see, like you get two, of, you know, of almost each one, I think. But that's, I mean, that's nice, because you can, you know, these bits don't last forever. They wear down, so having a duplicate's nice. So let's zoom in. I'm going to show you. This thing is super, super duper easy to use. I'm I don't need to be all the way on a three for this because I just need this tiny little bit around his eye. So I'm gonna go down to a one and I've got this nice fine tip on here. You can just kind of scrape away. that burn area. Around the eye. And you can go as deep as you want. Go as wide as you want. Make sure there's a, enough negative space there. You can really see that eye. And when I get ready to add color, you'll really be able to see it pop. So we've got some nice raw wood showing there now. And that's how easy it is to use. And you just charge it. Comes with a little charge cord. Keep it charged up. Now. I have used this a bunch and I'm still at full battery. So I'm guessing it, it lasts a long time. I haven't counted the hours cause I have not had to recharge it since my first charge. So now let's add some color. I, you know what? Let me do a comment check. <laughs> um, what kind of wood varnish do you recommend? Um, I use a bunch of different ones right now. I'm really, I really like a spray. I will say that I consistently use a spray because I just think it's easier. I get painters pyramids and I stack them up, um, stack my pieces on that. I coat the back and then I coat the front, and um, I, uh, I really like a lac the lacquer spray and I like a satin finish on almost everything I use. I don't want it to be too shiny and glossy, but I don't want it to be matte. So I, I always use a satin finish. Um, and I like the polycrylic spray is really nice too. Um, excuse me. Both of those, um, dry really fast. The lacquer spray dries in like 30 minutes or something like that. And then you can put on a second coat. Um, Depending on what it is, I might be, um, I might put on several coats. Like this, um, my desk here, this is lacquered spray. I burned my name, uh, my name, I burned the power crafter's name in over here. I don't know if you can, let me scooch over so you can see there. And I put like 
10 coats of lacquer spray on this because I wanted to be able to wipe it down. Um, so if I get paint and stuff like that on, I can easily just wipe it away. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, those are kind of my go-tos now, that polycrylic spray and um, that lacquer spray. But I have used several over the years. Okay, so I've got the paints here. And I don't, I'm not going to need any of these, I don't think. Well, I might use that blue. I might add a little bit of blue to the branches just to give it um, a little bit of coldness so that it looks a little, a little bit more wintry and contrast against the bird there. But we're going to go full on red and um, orange for the bird. Um, so sorry, my, my illness is making my brain slow. <laughs> So I'm having a hard time thinking of words. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna kind of show you guys how I do my watercolors. I got a cup of water off to the side here and a napkin. And I've got all my brushes. I use an array of like really small to really big, just depending on what I'm doing. So for this one, I'll probably be in this range right here, these two. And these are Cotman watercolors by Windsor and Newton. You can see I got the um, I think this is the 24 pan, and this all comes like this. You get two of these little um color wells that come in the kit here. And I mean, it was 50 bucks, I mean, it was kind of pricey up front, but I've had this for at least a year now, and I'm still using it. The only thing that I have had to buy in addition to is white. I go through a lot of white, um, and it's just easier to have a tube of white because I can kind of mix it with different things. Um, <clears throat> but that's it, really. I mean, you can see my yellow is getting low, so I might have to get some, some new yellow. But they've lasted me a long time. And another reason I like the watercolors because I can, you see all these colors here, they're all dried out, but I can easily um, just reconstitute them with some water. I keep one of these little eyedroppers here. And when my water is clean, I just grab some water and add some to my pan. So I've got, this is a, a nice deep red over here. This is a little bit of a pinker, lighter color. And then I've got an orange here. And that's really all I need. I'm going to add a little bit to this blue. And most of these are colors that are just in, in the palette pan. I mean, every now and then I have to mix up something, you know, uh, depending on the image. But I tend to keep my colors pretty simple. Um, I don't get real crazy with my colors. Put a little water in these if I need them. Just kind of pre-wet them so they're ready to go if I need them. Um, I just kind of keep my colors pretty simple. It's really more of an accent to my piece. So I try not to get too, too heavy on having my color details perfect. Um, I like for the wood burning to be the star of the show. So. And sometimes I pre-wet the canvas, uh, but I'm not going to here. I really just want um, the colors to add a nice punch. You know, a cardinal's nice and bright and red, and I want him to be nice and bright. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white over here, just to my pan. I just wanna get a little bit in there and mixed up. So if I need to add some white to my branches, it's good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this deeper red right here. And I'm just gonna start adding color. And at first it kind of looks like I'm covering up my burn. 
but as you move it around, you can see it moves off the burn pretty quick. And I'm just gonna do like an all over thing. And I'm trying to be careful um, not to get too close to the lines. Sometimes watercolor will bleed in the grains and stuff like that. So you just have to be careful with not adding too much water to your brush. If you keep the, um, the brush just kind of full of pigment and not so much water, you can kind of control that bleed a little bit. But if you do find it's bleeding, that's another <clears throat> another good use of that customizer. You can kind of um, erase away some of that bleed, if you will, if it starts to get outside in your burn areas. Just be kind of real careful on the edges there like that so you don't get a lot of excess color into the grains so it doesn't spread. And then add a little color to his, his tail down here. I hope you can see in the video like how, how thick that pigment is on my brush. It's not full of water. It's just pigment on my brush there. So it's not overloaded. It's not going to spread all in the grain. Oh, and see I got out of line there a little bit. If you catch it soon enough, just give it a little swipe with your finger there. You can kind of get it back. But you can see right here, it's starting to spread a little bit. Just kind of go back over it with a dry brush and kind of catch it before it spreads too much. And here in a minute, I'll use the customizer and show you how you can kind of clean that up. It's not spreading too, too much. You can kind of see right there, it's kind of coming out of the lines a little bit. But we can kind of clean that up with the customizer here in a minute. Okay, now that I've got a nice kind of all over color, I'm gonna come over here. So here's my red, I've got some browns over here, some of these kind of reddish browns. I'm gonna grab some of these and add a little bit of depth to my red here. I don't want it to be too, too brown. I can I kind of still want it to be red, but I just want to kind of deepen that color, that redness, so that we can add a little bit of shading under his wing here. Like, see where we we added that, that bit of, um, there's thicker lines to give it some detail where it looked like it was shaded. So I'm just adding some more red and orange in here to this brown. Just kind of deepening this color until I get it where I want it. It's still a little brown, so I'm going to add a little bit of red back to it. Now we're getting a nice kind of maroonish color. And you have to, you know, you have to experiment with your colors and kind of play around with color mixing. And you may want to take a day and just kind of play with colors. And it may take a little bit. Sometimes it takes me a while to get just the right mix of colors. And I've had to start over before too. Like just completely empty my, my pan there. And then um, start over. Just takes a little time sometimes. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of this deeper red. Come back here. Just right here along the wing. That kind of underside, add this little bit of red. 
just so it kind of deepens it a little bit. Maybe a touch of this, this brown. Just like that. And then along his back here, he's got another area where it's just a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper in color. A little here on the tips of his wings under here. And a little bit on his tail. Okay. I'm gonna add, just for fun, I just wanna see. If I add a little bit of this pinky, this pinky red right here, that helps brighten this chest a little bit. I kinda wanna just add a little bit of highlight to his chest there. Just cause it's like, it's, it's sticking out a little bit, you know? Just kinda brighten it up a little. I'm gonna let that dry and see how it looks. like to kind of layer these up a little bit. Let it dry, come back, see how it looks. Maybe add a little bit more, <coughs> excuse me. Add a little bit more color. Especially highlights, when you're adding highlights, sometimes you just let it dry completely and then come back and um, add your highlights. Let me activate some of this yellow. I might need that for the beak. And just kind of mix it around in there. So I'm gonna grab some of this orange. I think I put too much water in there. I mean, just grab it right out of the palette. And you know what? I'm gonna get my smaller brush. Brush is a little, little too big. Let's grab this little one here. And I'm just gonna get some of this orange. And I'm gonna pick it up for this. Just add some orange to the beak here. I wanna be careful not to add too much, don't want to too much water in there. And it's a little bright. It's a little too bright. So when I'm mixing colors, if I want to dull or kind of mute a color, I just add the opposite. So I've got my orange. I'm going to add just a little bit. I don't want not too much blue. And it'll just kind of dull it a little bit. So whatever the opposite of a color is, you just add a little bit to it and it'll kind of dull it. And you would start with just a little and then add two if you need to. If you, if you start with too much, you can't undo that. Okay. Now well, maybe add a little bit of this kind of dulled orange here. And I'm gonna let that sit and we'll see how that looks. Now around his face, I really, really wanted to have it stand out a little bit. But I think I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is just add, take this red and just kind of water it down. So I'm gonna dip it in my, in my color stick it in my water and just kind of water it a little bit. So I'm just kind of going to try to tint the wood with the red. You see how light that is? So I want a little bit of red in there, but not too, too much. And 
I just kind of want it to pop around his face there. I add a little bit right there. And I think that's good. I think that's good for now. So while that dries, I'm going to add some color to the branches. I'm, I want to add some white to his eye, but I don't want to do that while the other stuff is wet or it'll bleed all together. So I'm going to wait till that dries and then we'll come back and add some highlights. So I'm going to add, I'm going to grab a little bit of this, this deeper brown here, just right off the palette of my colors. And I'm going to come over and just kind of add a little color to the branches. And I'm just adding some just on this side. And I was kind of heavy with that swipe. So I'm going to clean. You can't see me doing this, but I'm cleaning my brush off on my napkin here. And now I'm just kind of cleaning up some of that water. And now I'm going to come back with a little bit of this blue. This blue right here. And I'm going to add it to the outside edge. It just kind of gives it a little something, a little pop of something other than brown. It kind of just tints it ever so slightly. Like light is hitting it. And that may be too heavy. We'll see. Just kind of add a little bit of blue to that brown. Just to kind of... It's a contrast. That contrasting color gives it a little something. Okay. So I think for this, this other branch under here... Oh, I forgot his little... There's a little bit of whatever that is. A little bit of something under there. You add a little bit of red in there. This little. Bit of his wing or something that's hanging down. Okay, clean my brush and then just kind of clean up some of this. Okay. So for this other branch, I think I'm going to do just like a little bit of a gray. I've got some some gray kind of sitting right here. Alrighty. So I'm just going to kind of reconstitute that. I just want this, this branch to be a little bit different than the other one. So they don't look exactly the same. They kind of stand out from each other a little bit. So... Just gonna kind of paint it with this this gray here. Just give it a little quick swipe. Then I'm gonna clean my brush off, dry it, and then I'm gonna come back, do just like I did before, and then just kind of spread the color around that's that I just put on. And in between his little feet here. And just kind of move that around till it fills in. Okay. Grab a little bit of this blue. That may be too strong. Just kind of dab it. And just add... A little bit of that blue in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And see, his face is already dried pretty well. So I'm going to grab my small brush. Clean it really good. I'm going to grab some of this white. Try to paint his eye. I don't want it to be 
too, too overdone. But I can add a little bit of white in there. And then just take a touch of water. And just kind of move that white around so it's not quite so strong. There we go. Now, we've got a little a little pop in his eye there that's not quite too overpowering. Okay, I guess I need to do something with his feet, don't I? What color is the cardinal's feet? I don't know. I think I'm just going to add a touch of brown. Maybe in just a little couple swipes here. I don't want to do it too much. It'll mix in with burn too much. I don't want to overdo it. Kind of add a little something in there. You feel that little space in. Okay. I think that's good. Didn't want to do too much there. Um, let me add a little bit of yellow <clears throat> to his beak. So, kind of tone down some of that orange. Orange is just a little over the top in it. Not too much water on there. Here we go. Almost has like a little gradient thing going on where it's a mix of orange and yellow. And uh, you don't have to worry about it. Covering up your burn there when it dries. Has your burn kind of come back out there. So now we've got some nice deeper reds here. He's got like a nice bright chest sitting on the wood. I might come back later and add some white or some kind of background just so it, it gives more of that that wintry look. But I'm going to call it good for tonight. So I just want to show you real quick how to clean up some of that bleed with um, the uh, the customizer and then we'll do the giveaway bit. I'm so excited to do one of these. Um, give one of these away. I think any pyro artist could use one of these. It'd be, it's a wonderfully handy little tool to have. little accessory to have in your kit. So, if you look here, I've got some, some bleeding color there. So, I'm just going to turn this to a two. Um, one thing you got to be careful with is you don't want to eat away too much where you've got like a gouge in your wood. and cleaned up and I can see a little red spot there and get that there's a little bit of red right there so you always want to set it on a lower setting and then kind of work your way up you don't want to you know accidentally add like a deep gouge in there and then have like a weird divot in your canvas you want to make sure you're you're kind of evening out what you're doing. So I'm gonna kind of, there's a little bleed right here.
nice and cleaned up. There we go. So very, very handy little gadget. So um, if you if you want to go ahead and just get one of these, uh, there is a link in my description below. You can just click that link, and um, if you put in the code there, I put a code in there um, in the description. You get ten percent off. Um, so how we're gonna do the giveaway is we're gonna do like an old school radio style you remember how they used to do like the you know the 10th caller wins you know blah 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 that's how we're gonna do it today so the first person that emails me and lets me know that they want the customizer is gonna win it so click in my description below hit that email send me an email letting me know that you want it um, the only stipulation it's got to be us and canada just for shipping reasons um and yeah that's it hit that email send me an email whoever whoever gets in my inbox first is going to be the winner of the tool and i will announce it on my instagram tomorrow and i'm gonna try to start doing a giveaway um in all my lives and I'll change up the number. Sometimes it'll be the first person. Sometimes it'll be the 10th, you know, that kind of thing. Just to kind of change it up a little bit. Um, but for this this live, this giveaway, I'm giving away one of these Caillou tools. They, they were so, so sweet and sent me one of these. And um, to do my live and to do a giveaway this week. And I am super, super stoked to be giving out one of these to you guys. Um, let's see. They should have a heart button instead of a like button. Aw. Steve Souls, would you want to send me a link to the customer? Yes, absolutely. Um, it is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it is in the description below. And if you want to just go ahead and buy it, it's, um, you get 10% off. Use regular color pencils. Okay, yeah, I have done that before. Um, and now you do use watercolor pencils. Um, so you can blend them together. You can blend the colors together. It makes it a little bit easier um, to, you know, add some definition. But you can totally use spray on those. Um, now, I have not used it on traditional color pencils. Um, they're probably a little bit more waxy, so I don't know how that would work with a varnish. You might want to test it. If you're ever in doubt, always test it. Grab a piece of scrap wood, put, you know, color something on there and varnish it and see how it turns out. You never want to use, um, a, a varnish combination on an, on a piece that you're not familiar with. Um, it may mess it up for good. Um... So I will finish this piece. I'm going to finish adding some color. And uh, I may add some details to the background. I originally said I wasn't going to. But he looks kind of lonely. And it doesn't quite look wintry enough. So uh, I'm going to finish it up off camera. And then I will post a finish pic on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it's just at Pyrocrafters. And uh, I post different stuff over there. Different tips and, and things that I'm doing over there on Instagram if you want to follow me there. And, um, I think that's it, you guys. I think I'm going to call it a night. We've been on here for an hour and 15 minutes-ish. So, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I, you know, I always enjoy doing these lives and connecting with you guys and answering questions and stuff in real time. And, um, oh, um, my book is... My new book that's coming out is available for pre-order. I, I forgot to put that in the description. So I will add that when I'm done here. <laughs> uh, 
um, if you guys want to check that out. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, I'm going to sign off now. My, my sick brain is, is falling apart. Um, so, I will see you guys next time. Thank you, Connie. And I will, um, you know, I try to go live the first Monday night of every month. So, you guys will see me again in January. Thank you for joining. And as always, if you guys have or have any questions, you know, you pop them in the comments. And I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Thank you, guys. And you're very welcome, Steve. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Good night, you guys.